The government of the Gambia says it has arrested four soldiers linked to an alleged plot to overthrow President Adam Ambaro's administration. The government says it is also pursuing other accomplices who it says are on the run. Baro came to power in 2016 after defeating longtime ruler Yaya Jame in elections. Some in the country have grown frustrated with the administration's failure to reduce poverty and the rising cost of living. Meanwhile, former President Jame this week told his supporters from exile that he will return to the Gambia very soon to rule the country again. The economic community of West African states has condemned the alleged attempted coup. Gambian government spokesperson Ibrahim Sankare explains to me how the alleged plot came to light. Well, the background is uh, the state intelligence services, the SIS, that used to be called the National Intelligence Agency submitted a dossier to the security forces alleging that they have uncovered some evidence of soldiers of the Gambia Armed Forces plotting to overthrow the government of Adama Baro. So certainly no government, uh, particularly in Africa and West Africa for that matter, a region that is prone to coups and counter coups, would take such allegations lightly. They acted on it. And yesterday, Tuesday, until in the early hours of Wednesday morning, the Army High Command conducted a very thorough investigation. And subsequently, four of the alleged plotters were apprehended, who are now helping the military police command in their investigations. Meanwhile, the command continues to pursue three more alleged accomplices in this ongoing situation. So the soldiers that have been apprehended, you say they are cooperating, is that correct? Yes, uh, I wouldn't want to use cooperating, but I think uh, they are helping the the military police with with their investigations. What does this have to do with the fact that the former president of Gambia, Yaya Jame, said earlier this week that he is going to be returning to Gambia soon? A part of your investigation looking into this also? Yeah, you know, when government launches investigations, they have to be very thorough uh, and very lucid so that at the end of the day, you know, nobody will be found wanting. The former president, uh, Igame, made serious threats of his purported plans to return to the Gambia by hook or by miracles. So obviously, this has not played into the thinking of the government or the arrest or apprehension of these officers. However, it is still important to bear in mind that uh, President Jame, that is, came to power through the barrel of the gun. So if such a character who has ruled this country with an iron fist threatens to return to power by all means possible, that is not also something government takes lightly. In the meantime, about your, your country's security, my understanding is that the West African troops are still in the Gambia. Is that correct? They are in the Gambia and... Um, the economic forces belonging to the community of West African states, yes, their mandate actually has been renewed for another year. As you know, they continue to play a pivotal role in the Gambia's security apparatus. We are it not for them. Uh, it was going to be very difficult for President Adam Barrow to actually sit as president because when Jamel lost to Barrow, he actually refused. He considered and rescinded and decided that he was going to stay for good. So it would, if it are not the might and power of these forces, he would have not actually left power. So there are continuous presence. That uh, God was helping him to identify some genuine Gambians to make it possible for him to return. How concerning is this to your government? Well, his relationship with God is something else. If you know Jame, the character, he has these material tendencies. Guy who wanted to be an emperor, he believed he was a, a chef, a professor who could barely read a verse from the Quran. So personally, the government is not actually bothered by his relationship with God, knowing exactly what the TRRC has unfolded as to his religiosity and stuff like that. However, his threats are threats of a former head of state who will get enormous power, and those are not actually taken lightly. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. My profound pleasure.
Ibrahim Sankare is the Gambian government spokesperson. He was speaking with me from the capital, Banjul. Liberian President George Weah has called In the wake of tough economic challenges, Wea has said his 48 days out of the country were in the interest of the nation. Speaking Wednesday evening during lighting of the national Christmas tree in Monrovia, President Wea urged Liberians to appreciate and celebrate the peace that the country has enjoyed since the Civil War. This event, which took place over 2,000 years ago, has always been commemorated as a time of joy and happiness, a time of fellowship and goodwill, and a time of peace. And for us, fellow Liberians, we must all be particularly grateful that we are living in a time of peace, the peace that we have enjoyed for more than two decades now should never be taken for granted. It must be appreciated, celebrated, protected, and preserved, not only at Christmas, but throughout the coming years. As we come to the end of the most significant years in our history, in which we commemorate that the bicentennial anniversary of our journey towards nationhood and independence. We must also equally reflect on the fact that this Christmas is a prelude to a coming year which also be another very significant milestone for Liberia. This is because presidential and legislative elections are due to be held in 2023. When we will once again have the opportunity to demonstrate the majority of our democracy to the conduct of elections that are free, fair, transparent, and credible. I therefore want to call upon every Liberian today to commit themselves to behavior that promotes peace and lawfulness throughout these elections. For my part, I have place myself on the record on many previous occasions when I have pledged my unrelenting support for elections that are free, fair, transparent, and credible, and peaceful. I now ask for a similar pledge from all who will participate in these upcoming elections, both the leadership and their followers. Let me say again that I will do all that is legally within my power to ensure that the coming elections are conducted in an atmosphere that is conducive for citizens to freely and safely exercise their sacred constitutional right to choose those who will lead them. The voices of the Liberian people will and must be heard and respected. That was Liberian President George Weah speaking Wednesday evening during lighting of the National Christmas Tree in Monrovia. The audio was provided courtesy of the Liberian Ministry of Information. In Liberia, an opposition member of parliament and a fierce critic of Liberian President George Weah says if the president wants war in Liberia, he will get it. And if he wants peace, he will also get peace. Yeke Koluba says President Weah, upon his return from a 48-day foreign trip, called him a crazy man. He also says the president told his supporters to harass Koluba. President Weir has been criticized for being out of the country for 48 days. He said upon his return that the trip was in the country's interest. Representative Koluba tells me Liberians need a new leader because President Weir has become an embarrassment to the country. Look, Uncle Bode, the president left the country for more than 50 days. And what did, he, what did he bring for the people of this country? He didn't bring nothing. We didn't see nothing he brought. He can't tell all what he brought. 
only to come and, 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 and start raising insults at people. I, I increase it. You know, I, I, I don't have a good upbringing, causing opposition leaders. I don't think that what you were elected for. You were elected to govern the country. You left this country to go enjoy ride, to go enjoy yourself. You know, you didn't bring nothing for the people to tell you, you didn't bring anything. But instead, you took the podium to the church. The church has become uh, 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 where people go now and push their political matches. I don't think it should be so. You know, the churches are not to get involved with politics, allowing people to use their platform, you know, to insult people. Those people, we don't call them, we don't call them uh, 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 pastors, we don't call them bishops. Those are regime collaborators. We have a president that, that is uh, recruiting malicious to get at the opposition, recruiting a lot of people, even got criminals that have been recruited by the justice minister into the security apparatus. We got evidence, I got evidence. I took the evidence of the justice ministry and you have all the evidence. And some of the poor are even impacted by the justice minister. So to find criminals in place in the, in, in the security apparatus to kill us in the country, we are not going to take it like this. You know, this country needs changes. The Liberal people made a serious mistake to elect Ambassador We are. Ambassador We are become a serious embarrassment to this country. You cannot govern the country anymore. So let me ask you, uh, Honorable Kaluba. So you said the president called you a crazy man. You also said that uh, the president told his supporters that they should harass you. These are allegations. He made a statement. He said it. He said, I can tell people to even insult him and gather him. He said it. Listen to a clip. He said, I can pay people to insult him. But the fact that the president made that utterance, he spoke that out of his mouth, that means he's telling his supporter to get to me. And on the bottom, we are not going to be afraid. If the president wants war, he will get war. If he wants peace, he will get peace. So I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid on the bottom. If you want peace, you will get peace. If you want war, you will get war. But one good thing I can show him, I will give him a better Liberia. I, on the Yeke, Yapa, will call him, I will give him a better Liberia. And I'm going to ensure that happens. If your allegations are correct now, why would he tell his supporters to attack you? Because he ain't got nothing to say. He said, why we should talk? He don't want anybody to talk. Everybody should sing praises to him. I was elected to represent the people of Liberia and to represent the people of District Number 10. I can be a bodyguard or safe or praise singer to you. I'm not going to do that. So I'm ready for him. If he's ready for war, he will get war. If he's ready for peace, he will get peace. Anything that president is ready for, I am ready to give it back to him. Representative Yeke Koluba is an opposition member of the Liberian House of Representatives. He was speaking with me from the capital, Monrovia. You are listening to Daybreak Africa on The Voice of America. I am James Botti in Washington. Today is Thursday, December 22nd. For more Africa news and features, visit our website at voaafrica.com. Connect with us on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. A special court in Juba, South Sudan, has sentenced a religious leader to nearly three years in prison for insulting President Salva Kiir. A relative of the man who calls himself a prophet says the judgment was unfair. My young David Mayang has this report for VOA from Juba. Prophet Abraham Chol Maked of the Kush International Church will not be spending the Christmas Holy Week with his followers. On Tuesday, a special court sentenced the controversial cleric to two years and eight months in prison and a fine amounting to $800 for insulting the president. Ladjurkwet Jal, the head of the prosecution team, says the three-judge panel found Prophet Chol guilty of breaching two sections of the South Sudan 2008 penal court. The court frame charges only two sections, section 76 and section 202. So the section 76 is only one year imprisonment and section uh, 202 is only three years. So the court uh, convict the accused and sentenced him uh, to pay fine 500,000. Uh, if he did not pay, he will spend three months in the jail. Chol was arrested in July 2021, a few days after he pronounced a prophecy from God in which he predicted President Kiir and First Vice President Riyak Mashar would not be in power after the Independence Day anniversary of 2021. That time has now passed and the two men are still in power. Relatives of the cleric and defense lawyers say 
The judgment made no sense. Philip Deng is a cousin to Abraham Chol. The way we look at it and the way we welcome it as a family, it is quite shallow. You cannot charge him of insulting the president while he was talking to his God, and his God gave him the message to deliver to the president, and you call it an insult. He did not call the president stupid. He did not call him a useless man. He did not call him anything. He said, exit. That's the message, and he said he got it from God. Defense lawyer Johnson Mayik says Charles' team will file an appeal. We are going to appeal this case to the higher court of appeal. Then um, we'll tell them that this U.S. judgment was not fair for a man of God like Abraham. Both Kir and his arch rival Mashar have remained in power since 2006. Their dispute in 2013 resulted in a civil war that led to the death of hundreds of thousands of civilians and the displacement of millions others. A 2018 peace deal brought the warring parties together. Both sides have agreed to postpone elections to 2024. Sitting in the front seat of a prison transport vehicle after yesterday's court session, Chol insisted the country needs fresh minds to move forward. I'm here now working for a change. New life will come for the country. And the young president is, is a major, major need for this time. We need a young president. Our president is doing his work, is tired. We need to rest and see for a young president. Since his arrest last year, Shola has remained behind bars in the Juba Central Prison. For VOA News, I'm a young David Mayer in Juba. Kenyan police say Al-Shabaab extremists killed three people Wednesday morning in the north of the country. The Associated Press says the victims were in a police vehicle when they were attacked between two camps near the border with Somalia. The police say after the vehicle hit a landmine, the assailant fired a rocket-propelled grenade that killed two officers and a civilian. The extremists then set the vehicle on fire. On behalf of the Daybreak Africa crew, I am James Button, Washington, saying, have a great day and be safe whatever you do.